I'm Stuart and welcome to Sarnet Television. We're going to take a look with Chris at the disassembling of a Wheeland 700 series LED surface mount light. Take it away, Chris. Well, thank you, Stuart, and thank you for joining me on Sirenet Television. I have here Goody from Wheeland Engineering. It happens to be the 700 series Super LED light head. What I'm going to do is give you a bit of a look at what's going on to make this head what it is. So really with that, talk about the reflector inside here, the optics that make this light head as potent as it is, and then also how the diodes are laid in and affixed to their own diode board assembly. On the front of the unit here is a removable lens. It incorporates a compression gasket to help seal the unit. So when you have it mounted on your application, four screws go in to hold it, and with that, they'll compress the lens into the reflector. Inside here, you have, let's call it an hourglass type reflector. Basically, diode is centered inside, and then the hourglass helps increase the diode intensity by spreading the light both to the left and to the right, to the bottom and to the top. So with that, this optic here boosts the diode, fills up the reflector, and in turn, when the light head is lit, fully populates the whole head versus having a large footprint and just a small inner portion that's creating the light. Back of the unit has two pieces that assist in mounting. You have a polycarbonate seven by three, roughly, surface mount adapter piece. So with this, it'll go on the flat portion of your application, and it's basically a screw hold. So these will go into the holes that you drill for the mount, screws go through, press out the little feet here to help lock it on to the body panels. To keep the unit nice and planted and even on the surface, there's a rubber gasket included as well. In the back of the unit, four screws, we'll remove those here in just a second, a center input for your wiring harness, which for mounting these again, makes it really easy. So center hole versus something up in a corner or something on a left or something on a right side. The yellow dot here is a Gore-Tex breather. So when the whole thing is assembled and the lens is compressed onto it, the heat that's generated by the diodes is allowed to dissipate through the back of the housing. Pigtail wiring harness we'll get to once it uh, comes apart, goes back together. The total of six small Phillips head screws are gonna come out now to free the diode board from the front reflector assembly. So with a bit of a uh, wiggle and push, the diode board is freed. Eight diodes are what gives you your 700 series potency. They've been affixed into a complete board assembly here. So this is a metal fixture that acts as a heat sink. Diode boards are a complete epoxy sealed over all the electronics. Again, the wiring harness is soldered in in a four position connection, so power, ground, high low function, and flash pattern change, which from there break across the small circuitry that then transfers to all the diodes and in turn to the functionality of the unit. So really this little board here is what's making your 700 series work. So this is the reflector assembly and we can go one step further with it and remove the hourglass optic center portion. It's removed from the back and it's actually a two-piece fixture. So top portion, bottom portion. There you have it. So really quick what I'll do, just kind of somewhat crudely here, so I'll put this on the back 
And I'm gonna throw some power to it quickly here. So you can see how with the lack of optics and diffusing in the front lens, really if you don't have that, you're not gonna have the large footprint that you get when you turn it on without any of that. So kind of something fun to see here that a lot of folks really don't have the chance ever to. power button, there it is, I knew it was down there somewhere. So you can see it is a nice bright fixture. Don't get me wrong, the eight diodes are nice and potent, but you can see it just doesn't have quite the pop that it does when it's assembled with the optics to boost it. So again, diode board assembly hourglass optics, outer lens, and what's neat, since the diodes produce your color, the lens itself is really just a cosmetic. So if you wanna have a clear lens for your application to match everything, or colored matched lenses, it's up to you for whatever choice you want your light heads to be. Separate pieces. So to reassemble, take this port here, two portions that create the hourglass. So back in. Diode set. And what's nice with this is each piece has its own little lip. So when it's disassembled and then going back together, line the lips up and all your screw holes will go back how they were before it came apart. So really, it's a great way for taking the unit apart and putting it back together and lining everything up. There we have it, reassembled to an extent here. Lens goes back on the front. Again, it's compression held. Now, rather than putting the rubber gasket back on and the backing, I'm gonna show you one of the flanges that's available to go with your 700 series. Take the chrome version here. It's available in a black as well. So since this is going away, the light head fits into the gasket, basically just drops in like so. And in the flange here, you also have another incorporated gasket. So when the screws go in to lock it onto your body panel, everything compresses in nice and tight, keeping grit, grime, and condensation out. Flange comes with a new rubber backing And then once it's all together, it'll look just like this here. Or like I said, you can dress it up with the black flange if you wanna go that way. Or if you go without, no worries. You can put the 700 series on with this gasket here. Just keep this out of the way for now because really don't think it would be too appropriate to screw it into the tabletop here. But that aside, we'll go ahead and light it up here so you can see how the optics inside and the optics on the lens boost the juice up here. So the amber unit has a amber, well, really orange colored trigger wire here. Conventional black for the ground. And 
man, where is that darn switch? There it is. Back up and flash in. So you can see, more potent, fills up the light head better. The lens as well, you get a li little bit of uh, off access lighting. So in big applications, so your fire or your rescue equipment, it's a great way to uh, have lighting front side, rear facing with a little bit to the side as well for intersection protection. If you're wanting to turn the intensity down for your nighttime use, the violet wire here, apply it to 12 volts, reduces the intensity. Take it away, back up to full juice. So as long as it's applied to 12 volts, kicks it into low mode. So in your application, you can add another switch, use it as a high-low function, tie all the violet wires to it, and then you have a nighttime function for your vehicle. Scan lock wire here is the classic white with purple trace. Pop that little cap off there. So again, classic wheeling, take the scan lock, positive 12 volts, flash pattern advances. Every time you tap it, it'll advance to the next pattern set. Every time you turn it on, turn it off, it'll retain the pattern it's set to in its internal memory chip. So really something for everybody here. You have fast patterns, slow patterns, and even ones that do a bit of a cycle. So fast, slow. It's really everything that you could want in a nice, clean, roughly seven by three large footprint light head. Again, works great for fire, rescue, law enforcement equipment, and great big old DOT trucks. Amber looks great on them. Thanks for spending some time with me here on SirenNet Television. I'll kick it back over to you, Stuart. Well, thanks, Chris. That was pretty darn interesting, I might say. And hopefully you enjoyed it too. And again, from all of us here at SirenNet Television, thanks for watching.